workspace, mm. having to figure that because all this, oh, everybody is just so nice. Everybody like we are all you know human beings here. We love each other. Oh my okay. humanity <laughs> and uh, hey, 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 hey. my okay. first work experience was tough. It was hard because I went in very naive. I was thinking, oh yeah, everybody like we got we got each other's backs here, and yeah, yeah that girl just ah, uh, hmm. they shake it and they showed me. Mm, Nobody mass. told me. I feel like workplace. Um, how would I put it? Community or, is another yeah. it's another completely different ball game. Like no one will tell you how to navigate a workplace. Oh. You have to learn on the go. On your and then nobody. That's the thing. They don't it, tell you. Nobody tells you ahead. I wish somebody had told me. Okay, when you get to your workplace. Try and observe. Don't be too quick to speak. And HR is not your friend. Right? HR is not your friend. <laughs> yeah. No, everybody is not your, your friend. Your boss is not your friend. <laughs> I knew I was a psychic. I have to the role. I would say a major life lesson for me was when I moved out of my parents' uh, house at what, 22 or 21 or there so. 22? And yeah, oh. when I moved out, it was pretty early. I, I mean, I'm, I'm here the in first. Lagos. Yeah? Here in Lagos. Yeah, here in Lagos. My parents live in Lagos. I'm the first child and I'm a woman. So it was a big deal in my house. No one had ever moved out in my family before they got married before. So it was that kind of vibe where they had to call me saying that, oh my God. Uh, and they called the lady to top your head. <laughs> Girl, if you are from a Yoruba family, you know that in this small thing, there's already meeting. Everybody's already, uh, uh, gets. Wow, interesting. Wow, there was a whole meeting like, oh, I didn't tell anybody I wanted to move out. I just decided on my own. And I'm like, I think I've gotten to that point where I can make that decision. For I, yourself. You know, for myself. I'm 22. And I, I, I lived on my own when I was doing my NYC. It, it wasn't a big deal. So I don't yeah. think it should be a big deal now. Plus, mm -hmm. I'm still in the same city as you. You still get to see me. Yeah. But, you know, they... Well, so they you had, finished NYC and went back home? Yeah, okay. I went back home. And, you know, it, it was a drag between I and my father, but at some point he understood that, okay, I, I have to let this girl go. And I think I was even super excited till life started happening to me. You know, I started paying bills. The <laughs> Pro Max I started paying bills. I had to adapt to, like, a different environment. I was completely on my own now. I didn't have any parents telling me what to do. And I had to I had to be responsible for my own, for you know, yourself. decisions mm -hmm. that I was making in my life. And that was I would say I really learned a lot, you know, from moving out because it made it made me like notice the patterns of my life or my personality or my character mm -hmm. the things that i i normally do the way i do them yeah. and that has been very very humbling it's, it's a humbling experience for me because like a lot of people a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people are not like self-aware to the point where they know what they are doing yeah. and how they can correct whatever they are doing wrong yeah, and i i think it forces part. you to that space where you have to now analyze the decisions you are making in your mm -hmm. life because now you are responsible for yourself. You know, nobody is telling you that, okay, do you want to get a second degree? Do you want to do your master's? What do you want to do? Yeah. This is you telling yourself now that, oh my God, maybe I should get a certification. Maybe yeah. I should do this. Maybe mm -hmm. I should. No one is pushing you. You kind of yeah. have to push yourself. So that for me, like, is a major life lesson that I had to now start, like, motivating myself affirming myself, telling myself that, you know what? If no one is going to tell you, you tell I'm you proud yourself. of you. <laughs> that and, you know, very and like, I'm proud of how far you've come. Yeah. And it was, it was very big for me because, you know, I, I started learning that at the point where I didn't even have anybody to talk to, mm. I started writing down my feelings. I started journaling. I started mm. looking for healthy ways to actually, like, be productive. Because let me tell you, at some point, I hit an all-time low. I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say it was because I was living alone. There was a lot happening, you know. Yeah. But at that time, even if I was at my, at my parents' house, mm -hmm. I can't tell them I'm depressed. They're going to look at me like, girl. What's, 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 the meaning, what's the meaning of depressed? Switch up. Mm -hmm. Define it for me. They're going to look at me like, you better pray depression. that away. You better go and pray right now. And 
growing up like and moving away by myself has kind of forced me to now understand other people like yeah. i now have to put other people's perspective yeah. into like consideration consideration yes. now like yeah. i have to think of how that next person is you I'm know gonna feel yeah because so, it's not just your family anymore now it's other people it's from, now me and the world completely yeah. different backgrounds exactly so i feel like i had to grow up either way it's like i had to learn how to adapt and you know treat other people's opinion as important as mine yeah and you know, moving on, you now see that some people were not even raised pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like people, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's not we, go there. Like we have different backgrounds, and we we all come from different backgrounds. But mm -hmm. like some people's values and the things they place importance on mm -hmm. is different. different like yeah. I value friendship, I value community, I value um, people that are real with me. I don't. I'm not. I'm not superficial, you know, I be, I don't yeah, know how to, superficial, you know? yeah. yeah, like, I'm not superficial, I like realness, I like people that have been real with me, yeah. and again, when I started living on my own, I met a lot of people, you know, people that were, you, mean you know, you projecting, a lot of characters. exactly, mm -hmm. projecting what they were not. And that is why I think it's very important to know yourself because you can get really lost in the world, especially yeah. if you well, live here in Lagos. Crowd. There is a lot of personalities here. So, in a way, I had to now rediscover myself. Like, I had to rediscover myself because mm -hmm. I had to be like, okay, you can see how these people are living their lives. How do you want to live your life? You know, yeah. like, what, what do you want to do? Are, do you want to do this because other people are doing it? Or because, do or do you want to stay it? true to mm -hmm. what you want to do? Mm. And that, like, that right there is like the major lesson for me the fact that i have to continue analyzing myself and trying to grow and try yeah. to be a better person and yeah it's a lot i but completely it's worth agree it. with you i completely agree with you and i I've, i have a similar um life experience i'm actually curious to Me. find out when you left you guys <laughs> oh <laughs> well, so then. long story mm -hmm. i'll keep it as short as possible mm -hmm. um i've always been this type of child my dad didn't like it actually um, I've been very, very extremely independent. I was very extre extremely independent, independent as a child. And I say my dad didn't like it because some things I'll just make decisions on my own without... So if I go to him and tell him, it's not a, oh, daddy, I'm asking permission for clinical. Should I? Uh -uh. I'm telling yes, you. Yes, I am going because, so, so yeah, I'm too. Because I've made my decision. <laughs> I've thought about it. I've marinated and thought about it. So I'm coming to tell you this is what I'm doing. Just, you know, for curtsy. Yeah. And my dad would be looking at me like, this child, did you kiss like this? <laughs> is everything, is everything all right at home? <laughs> and when I, when I was younger, I knew exactly how I wanted my life to be. I knew when I was going to leave home. I knew where I wanted to go to. I knew, like, the exact place I wanted to work at. So I was already, like, trying. Even before I left, I was already, like, sending... Um, emails to them telling them so I, I want to work I want to work with them even as an intern or something whatever so I knew the trajectory of my life um leaving home eventually I didn't stay like after three months of graduation from school I came straight to Lagos the plans that I told my dad isn't what I knew exactly what I'm going to do but I couldn't tell my dad because I knew he wouldn't approve of what I might plan to do yeah. um so I already I told him oh I'm going to stay at my sister's place but no I want to stay at my cousin's place I didn't want to tell my dad I was going to my cousin's place because my cousin wasn't in the country. So to him, like, if you go to your cousin's place, you're going to be staying alone. Yeah. So he wanted me to say at my sister's place so that somebody could be there watching over me and catering for to you. So. And I didn't tell him all of this. So when I got to the legal, I found out, like, oh, okay. So I'm like, okay, I've seen your sister now. Uh, actually, okay. I'm not at my sister's place. I'm at my cousin's place. My dad caught the call. <laughs> For three months, he didn't talk, he didn't speak to me. Oh my, he was pissed. He was, he was really, really mad at me. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is how I want to live my life, sir. Rest. And after three months, he just called me one day and he was like, um, how are you? Are you taking care of yourself? Yes. Aww, are you so cute. getting, are you working, are you getting money? I'm like, you. yes. At some point, you're back on. I'm like, okay, just, if you need anything, let me know. I'm like, uh, okay. Okay, your daddy is the man. <laughs> I was like, oh, after <laughs> three months of not speaking to me. So, the major life lesson here for me was don't be too quick to grow up. Because even when I came to Lagos, it sounded nice. It sounded like 
you know exactly what I wanted new, to do with my adventure. life. Yeah, an adventure. <laughs> and I've always also been very adventurous. So to me, it was new experience, new environment, new adventure. I was tired of living at my parents' place. It was going to be a new, whole new level of whatever. And then I come here. To be honest, yes, I did experience all of those things. But there was also the negative side of it. Yeah. Because now you have to deal with life all by yourself. All by, uh, all by yourself. Recently, because of everything that's, that's been happening in the economy, I literally was thinking to myself, like, would it be so bad if you were still staying, if you were still living with your parents? It means that you don't have to care about house rent. You don't have to care about where food is coming in. You don't have to care about Unless bills, paying NEPA bills, that. paying mm. this and that, because your parents would have it covered. And then I was just thinking to myself, like, I mean, there will be a point in my life where I'll start having kids, I'll get married, I'll start having kids of my own. And these kids will not... You need they to be able know. to sustain yourself to be able to sustain exactly. them in the long run. And these kids will not know how... Like, they, just, they won't know where food is coming from. They won't know where money is coming in from. To them, it's, oh, my parents got it covered. But you have your life ahead, too. And there will be a point in your life where you're thinking about your life major lessons well. that you wish you had mm -hmm. done differently. Now, I'm not saying that I wish I'd done all this differently. I probably would have done it either way. But I felt like maybe calm down. Don't be too, don't be in a rush. Too, because I already knew, like, I was just going to go. And have I achieved all everything? No. And you know, I've at the end achieved. of the day, it's almost like that rat race you were running so yeah. badly. You still, life has a way of humbling you that you retract you yourself. Yeah. You slow down. You just have to slow down. If you eventually want to get to where you are going, no. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy. And then another major one was, I think, work, workspace. Mm. Having to figure that. Because all this, oh, everybody is just so nice. Everybody, like, we're all, you know, human beings here. We love each other. Oh, okay. my. Humanity <laughs> and uh, hey, 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 hey. My okay. first work experience was tough. It was hard because I went in very naive. I was thinking, oh, yeah, everybody, like, we got, we got each other's backs here. And, yeah, yeah, that girl just, ah, uh, hmm. the shaggy that they showed me, mm, nobody mass. told me. I feel like workplace, um, how would I put it, community is another, yeah. it's another completely different ball game. Like, no one will tell you how to navigate day. a workplace. Oh. You have to learn on the go. On your, and then nobody, that's the thing. They don't it, tell you, nobody tells you ahead. I wish somebody had told me, okay, when you get to your workplace, Try and observe. Don't be too quick to speak. And HR is not your friend. Right? HR is not your friend. <laughs> yeah. No, everybody is not your, your friend. Your boss is safe. not your friend. <laughs> they put their business friend. over you any day. Yeah. So, so these are things I learned on the job. These are things I learned on the job. And after a while, I'm like, you know what? When I move to the, to the next job, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> yeah. I already like started. I knew, I knew exactly how to navigate that environment but also it's also a different environment from where you were yeah so you also need to observe so these are things that i learned you learned on the go on the go you know, and i don't think i got all of these lessons at home to be yeah. honest because nobody really said maybe i was because i was so much in a rush they yeah, didn't have the time maybe you didn't have the time to have that conversation they didn't maybe have the time. time to tell me they have the opportunity to tell me come see this is our life <laughs> outside of a parent's house mm. is I feel so, like one yeah. thing that I've also really learned that I would say is a major life lesson for me is failing. You know, no one really tells Nobody you. Prepares <laughs> no one you really prepares you. you are gonna oh, fail. Yeah. No one tells you, you how, like, yeah. when you fail, it you kind of fail. drags you to a certain vibe. Where you're like, oh my God, should I? You just want to curl up under the blanket and like, yeah. no, this is not happening. But at the end of the day, that's why I say it's very important to motivate yourself because. No one is going to do that for you. You are I, your greatest motivator. I'm glad I have really. friends around me yeah. that, you know, you know Constantly motivate push me. You. But, like, I had to learn that failing is not the end. At the end of the day, yeah. like, it's the day the will end. end. <laughs> the beginning of a new team. Exactly. Actually, like, if you from fail, experience. You, you need to learn how to not take it personally. And I used to take failure for me, very yes. personal. You know when you send multiple emails, you want a job, and then they just turn you down, and it's like... <sighs> I think I learned that from childhood growing up, because failure was like a unspoken word in my house. I can come with seconds. You know that video? There's a video I showed you, <laughs> and I was like, Mike, I just posted a video on my family group. I wanted to just shake my dad. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
come, oh, I came second. And then I had my, my younger brother, the one beside me, uh, and before me, rather, he is, you know, he's that scholarship boy, you know, if he were first out of first, first out of hundred, uh, uh, first out of one thousand. <laughs> competition on one day like this. But I did not, I do not take it as competition. I just feel it's, there's healthy competition and then yeah. there's the really, really scary type yeah. of competition. Yeah. So in my house, it was like that. My brother's coming first, 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 and then you're coming with like third. And my brother's like, are you, try, try are you not seeing your own? Like, I do bets. I am like, ah, ah. <laughs> but I know, if it's another of your friend, though, maybe by now they'll have started doing party and pulling balloon up and doing things. But, you know, by the end of the day, you, you grow older and you find out how much all those things have shaped you. Mm. You know, I'm not, I don't take failure as, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's just yeah. a process for you to try something else. It might even be a beginning of something new. So that part too is also important. It's also part of the things you talked about moving out. But all I'll say, my own personal advice, don't be too much in a hurry, just like you yeah. said, to go. Enjoy the time. Enjoy the stages and phases. One thing I noticed this period, this, it's not Gen Z, I'm JS. They just, everybody just, you want to leave everything. You're 25, girl, you're 22. You're trying to do right? everything. You're like, you want to leave like you're 35. Really, I'm at that. It's all gone. I mean, you're going to be I will leave. You know, so take it easy, enjoy life. That's the only way I think we can even make it to 80. Because if not, the way people are, the way I feel our young people are living our lives too, yeah. too aggressively, you want, we have to sow before you reap. It's yeah. a process. Everything. A process. Life itself towards, is a process. I have this feeling towards young people that, towards young people that want to get married. Oh, like when you're like 19, 20, 21, and you're thinking about marriage, I'm like... Oh, see, I and my mom were having a conversation leave. just, just this not, past weekend. And not about, like, there's one thing that she said that busted my brain. She said, it is, that is really good. And she saying that from her perspective was really touching because she married young, 24, 23. And she said, it's really good age. for you to be mature as a lady. And she told yeah. me for my, it was like, oh, wow, so now you get it. Make you your frontal look develop. You know, make your mind, <laughs> make you forget make something it, for you. Like, develop have a good perspective. And you kind of feel... We start going back now. We feel like we're attacking them. Well, if we go back, it still goes back to this whole patriarchy thing. Yeah. Why not let these women live a little? Yeah. Make decisions. Not that they make decisions when they are young and naive. Yeah. Then they get older and get angry with those decisions, and that causes a lot of resentment. Yeah. Yes. And bitterness. And even passes on down to the children because you start to hate everything. Your mothers are look at their children as. Consequences of the problems of their life. Yeah. Not like, so, oh, God, I thank you for a kid. Like, that because of the, you know, the stuff that happened leading to up to that point. So that's also part of it. Let's enjoy our youth. The old age will come. We enjoy it too. Whatever phase, let's enjoy it. Failure is not the end of the world on, on that note. And then the one life lesson, like you asked, Ravina, would be take your prayer life serious, please. Mm. Take God seriously. Trust me, there's enough shaggy banza in the world. <laughs> but take your spiritual life. You know, this is a general conversation. So spiritual life, you know, whether you're Muslim, take your prayer time. If you're a Christian, it's not just going to church and wearing clothes and going to yeah. take a picture. And do, I'm part of the Are you, Do you pray I hope in your I closets? And say, do you have a relationship no. with God? Do you have a relationship yeah. with your maker? Well, because so you will need him in this journey called life. And of, you might think you have it all figured out. You see, even the, I have seen the most intelligent people flop, like, flop badly. Like, I didn't expect it because they were so used to winning, winning, yeah. winning, 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 winning. When the failure hit them, they could not grasp themselves. Yeah. Well, if you're failing, just know that you're in a process to a yeah. greater yeah. future. And take it as lessons and move forward. You see, may not be you take it, key yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I she's just looking at you. Like, <laughs> I feel like it's okay to fail. Like, it's, okay. Know, it's okay. If you fail, don't feel bad. You just have to pick yourself back up yeah. and not give up. That's the only thing. Kimzi, I wanted to ask you, yeah? Mm. I feel like one major thing that I had an issue with since I moved out is balancing my work life and my... Let's say fun life. Okay. Yeah, yeah, make the personal. So are you social? I have that figured out. No, I'm asking you. How <laughs> you know how you is it for you? Agba, 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 Agba. Because you you do you do a lot. Like the, you do a lot. You manage <laughs> artists. You are on radio <laughs> and 
<laughs> I, I work great doing customer, all of that. So I need to know how you know you balance how that. You, Give you us your. Work. <laughs> Let's Let's I, don't think, I don't think I have any advice. First off, I feel like man, just just do you honestly. Like do if you have the to power you. to combine everything, do that. I feel like me being able to balance everything all out is due to my upbringing. I had to do a lot of activities as a child. Mm -hmm. You're swimming, you're running, you're doing short pools. You're part of those families. You're that going to you're doing all the activities. Yeah, your parents you're going, you're, you everything must and you must be good in physics, them. Like That's crazy. you must do everything and find your fit. Hmm. So in the process of doing everything, you realize that you're now good at multitasking. Mm -hmm. Like I can mm -hmm. be here swimming tomorrow, two thirty, call me and say let's go and jump. <laughs> Yeah, I always have the energy to do anything, anytime. It just I, I, so far, I feel like doing it, then I'm ready to do it. So most especially, if you do not have the kind of upbringing I have, it would be very difficult for you. But you can always learn to multitask. But like in your kind of work where is more, you know, your work is fun. You know, it's work, but it's but, still fun at the end yeah. of the our day. Our work is fun. Our work, our, basically. Our work. <laughs> <laughs> it is work, Wait, but yeah. it's still fun. I, but I like, feel like it's how do you How do you keep it? Fun. How do you keep it professional? So and how do you draw that line? Like this is work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like how do you how do you do that? Honestly, I don't think I draw any line. I'm fun, I'm fun, accept it like that. Oh shit. I don't think I'm and no, actually fun. She's fun. If the if the work is boring, I will not enjoy it. Honestly. Yeah. I feel like the fun part is what is making me want to do the yeah. work. If you tell me to be professional, why am I being professional? Am I selling cosmetics? That's I don't know. When I say professional, I mean the people place, now. I mean people now. Yeah. Why the shade? Why the shade? Um, why the shade? I feel, <laughs> yeah. she, she's like the cosmetic. Yeah. Like no, but then I feel like doing doing radio and um, doing red carpets is the fun part that attract people to wanting to communicate with you. Oh, you yeah. sound exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, you take it with that whole professional straight word, that whole vibe. And I think it's a personality thing, honestly. I yeah. don't personality think, thing, yeah. I don't think you have to be so serious all the time. People think I'm so unserious, even when I'm being serious. Mm. It's because of how I've presented myself. Like, the physical body for me is unseriousness. Because if I'm unserious, you will be unserious and you and I will do the work. You're helping me do my work in a very easy way because you look at me, oh, you're so unserious. I don't think this person will be serious. But I've done the job, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. I have given mm -hmm. you your content. I have brought in the money. I've done the business. And that has helped me actually navigate working space. And also making it very possible to have a good time with my colleagues at work. I know they beef with anybody. Nobody. If you beef me, you get spiritual problems. <laughs> well, like, don't just, go, don't go. Don't kill me, I don't, please. <laughs> I don't see any reason. I don't see any reason why you're going to start any problem, even when there are differences in maybe conversations, <laughs> so or choices, or, or something. You know? Like I still, one thing I tell myself, and one thing my father would tell you is, if you're working, you're number one. Undermining the fact that you have bosses, you're your boss, mm -hmm. you're your servant, yeah. you are still the person collecting your money. So whatever decision you're making at the office, make sure it's best for you. Not your, even for yeah. your boss. Best, best. for you. Like, it is it best, best for, for you? you? Like if your boss tell you, sit down there. If at that moment you feel like sitting is not what you want, stand on it and say, I will not sit. Like, if you need reasons to also sit, be willing they to should also tell you reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just no, but then, that's not <laughs> <like, laughs> That part. <laughs> no, but then, <laughs> every, every, everything. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying. Angela, what they're saying about Angela, Angela is very bold and yeah. very, um, what's that word? I would say, because she's not confrontational, she is you know, very vocal about very blunt, what she also. wants and yeah, what she like what I want. I don't care what anyone wants. Yeah. I feel, I don't, I don't, I don't and otherwise, the like serious like one it. and the over-serious <laughs> one. <laughs> and I feel like people will still love the seriousness you bring to the job. At the end of the day. The fun. If you're yeah. coming to entertainment, this is it. Be on serious but still do your job. Like, I can't be on the red carpet and be so serious. How are we going to have fun? How am yeah. I going to get my content? If I'm actually working with my talent, I need to be able to make him comfortable. I need to also be a mom, be a friend, be a boss as at that time. Everything all in one. Did you say be a mom? Yeah, because you have you're, to mommy you're, your artist. 
Yeah, because you literally have uh, to make oh, sure my he's sister. Okay. Miles going oh yes, <laughs> that is a lot. Right. You literally oh, yes. have to make sure he's like he's one hundred percent. We're coming coming back to the conversation. Do you get so I think I feel like Ravina is trying to another point you're trying to get is how do you balance? You know they say work friends and personal friends like there's a difference. That yeah. part we might be cool at work. Does not mean I want to hang out with you after, after work. work. Yeah. Does not mean you call me and start asking me some very funky ass questions like, <laughs> "Yeah, you is it because I'm greeting you good morning? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you calling me and like asking me some really personal questions?" Yeah. And it's always pretty hard to draw the line because most people want you to smile too much with them. They assume that they are your friends. But and then you should know you're not my friend. I feel uh, like, yes, you should know. If you're, this if you're that, no, because some people want to be your friend. Yes, some people that truly want to be your friend. Truly, truly. They are pushing intentions. that edge to want to be your friend. But you wanting to be my friend does not mean me and you, we are, are friends. Kiki, 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 shut up, bitch. We are not friends yet. You're in the process of being friends with me. So there's obviously a line. And the line is, obviously, I'm not going to text you every time. I'm not going to talk to you all the time. I'm not going to hang out with you all the time. I will reject your hangout anytime, any day. If you're my friend, trust me to come out for you. Like be like 3 a.m. I said, if you call me and tell me, yo, let's go out. <laughs> I am outside. That's because I consider you my friend. You get yeah. But if we're not friends yet, you cannot invite me to so many places. There are so many conversations you and I cannot have. And even if you're trying to have certain conversations with me, I even the way I will even give you the Respond okay, oh, I'm so response. sorry, it is well. I think you should talk to your pastor. Exactly. You get you will obviously know that I'm not that interested. That is good advice. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm really not interested. Well, again, I wanted to actually like um Go back, preference to when you said, you know, leaving your parent house, mm -hmm. you need to find yourself, you need to be more self aware. I'm going to defend the girls that still stay with their parents, and depending mm -hmm. on your type of parenting depending style, on your type of parents, your parents, you. people yeah. you're living with, yeah. I would tell you that I became self aware from living with my parents. I'm not even going to lie, it's not even by coming outside every day to yeah. see people. My self awareness started from my house because my dad is strict. And he's building women in men body. Mm -hmm. That kind mm. of home training. Yeah. You know, you are a woman, but you're going to be like a man. You're going to do things you're that people to expect to men think to do. Like a man, be you able get, to do things. He made us independent in certain decisions. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't impose, you ask. Do you get? So all those things actually groomed you up to a certain level. And when it comes down to making friends, I was unable to make friends as a child because my dad had the opinion of, oh, friendship would lead you astray. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You get no, like, yeah, was some like I really I think, think my own house my I think nobody that was the visits only me, I don't visit anybody of living yeah, my with your parents. Are our best Not all parents are welcoming to Crazy. having your friends. Having and friends. Even for the male gender and so I think ah, it was until I got into the university three hundred level <laughs> that my mom is cleaning up. I can even say, Oh mom, this is my friend. She'll say, Oh, bring them to the house, let them go. Or before, bring wood. If I see you bring, at my bring, gate, bring, I'm already <laughs> sweating because I'm going to pick a pin. Mm. When you leave, my dad will ask, who is that person? How are you guys friends? So, like, oh, are you friends? No, Why you guys and the really next thing, I'm picking, right a pin on, I'm picking a pin for you coming to my house. And trust me, when yeah. I come to school tomorrow, I'm fighting with you. I feel like that like, stems from, you it's, know, it's funny. trying to... Wanting nobody to influence your children of how yeah. you from you, and which, which again, is acceptable that, at least to your legal no, that can, age. That can actually to lead for to yourself. like control issues, you know. Like I don't think it if is you control issues, a lot of a lot of there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of Nigerian a lot of Nigerian parents that that, do yeah. not want you to fail. Mm. And we just talked about failure here. Yeah, now handling true, failure true. is very yeah. important. Like you need. I think to our Nigerian to, parents also need to learn how to handle exactly. failure from their children. Ah. I feel like Nigerian parents mm. do not want you to fail, so they want to protect you from every mistake that you can ever make. Yeah. Instead of letting possible. you, instead of letting you possible, make those mistakes. Make mistakes. And that yeah. is why I said, Sorry. again, living with Thank your parent you. might not be the worst thing, yeah. but it will prevent you from making your own mistakes because they're still going to have control over you <coughs> to a certain mm -hmm. level. I beg to differ. Do you get? Because when you're living under your parent, there are rules. There are things that you can or cannot do. Like you said, before, you started, wait, before you started bringing friends home, you know, it, it, it took a it while. Took a while. Yeah. Your, your parents had their own reasons why they said, you know, we don't want friends around you. Why they want to know every single detail about the kind of friend that you have. Because they are very, they are very particular about the kind of influence. You yeah, know, they those are. people well, have on you. But wait, but wait, friends. but wait. If you don't make friends, and if friends do not betray you, how do you now learn 
about betrayal? How do you learn about betrayal? How do you learn the kind of friends you actually want? Because I mean, if a friend no do you bad, you not go know the kind of friend the way you go mm. want in another person. Never show no, you but to be honest, to be honest, this conversation, I don't. I, that's why I said there's a thin line between when people, when parents shelter their children and also let them be free. Yeah. In this day and age, with everything happening in this world right now, I don't want to start talking about the, all the, <laughs> all the evils of the world, all the madness, all mm -hmm. the evils of this world. Mm -hmm. I would not blame parents who want to shelter their, their children. Yeah. I don't blame just them. So I just think that at them. a certain you age, still you no, no, still I agree on that one. Do, at a well, certain at age, you would have developed them to a point where you have you are able to. To have instilled African parents don't know adult. They don't no, know they do I'm 18, I am grown yeah. now. Sweet <laughs> trouble. My matter, <laughs> we're not going to finish this talk today. I promise you. you. When I told my dad one time, it's not dad, though. Honestly, I'm, it's from a good place. I'm yeah. 18 now. Research. I can make my own decision. <laughs> he said, go and kneel down there. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the time they made decision for which house. And this is the same man that used to tell me that, don't worry. When you are 18, you can make your own decisions. It's a lie. When that 18 years come, my sister. When you are 21. Is, I'm telling you. My sister. I had this you. conversation. When you get to 21, you are 25. Dad, I told my dad, once I'm 22, that you let me, that I want to get. Even before I'm having this conversation. <laughs> the house. You know how many times I ran away? Oh, I'm <laughs> From 40 so years old, I ran away. Bro, I ran away. When the thing was getting to me, I'll run. I'll go to my friends. I'll stay one week. My father will threaten me. If you don't come back to this, I will put your name on newspaper. I will put out your friends. I will arrest everybody. Domestic. The next week, they will come to the office. So I feel like African friends, you guys, I know you love us. We love you too. But you know, you need to give let us, your you need children to give us a little bit of adult room to yeah. grow and to be grow adult. And be you have to you make are. those mistakes. Yeah. I know you love you the, the part of it is protecting us from. No, but there are some kind of mistakes that you just should have to know what your children make. So, uh -huh, but so exactly. how about making these mistakes and still being able to come home to talk to your parents about this? That's, that's, that's another thing. That's another thing. thing. Another angle. Another, so that's that's not right open there. conversation. But anyway, I'm still grateful for my family because there's still open conversation. Even if you're terrified, you still talk to them. You can still talk to them. They will shout at you. They will scold you, but they will definitely... Yeah, so guys, in they will it's I never had a need to have conversations with my parents. Deep, maybe. <laughs> no, they will just... Life even, even, even but maybe dating, life changing even conversations. Even for dating and even for marriage. Eh, my mom will still you are having dating me. conversations with yes, your parents? Yes, my mom will still tell me. Don't follow a man ah. that wants to just have sex with you. That you get clarity or you get clarity when you ask God sometimes. <laughs> no, but do you know to an extent, yeah, okay. when you apply those advice or the advice you it's get from your parents, it works. Me, no. Like it works in, in so many ways that you don't even see. That's why I said open communication. My mom would tell you, anybody that will tell you to get pregnant before they do anything, it's they hate no. you. Hmm. They do no. not love you. Run away. Hmm. Put yourself first as a woman. Make sure. And one thing she always says, be ambitious. Don't end your career for anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. you I get, like your so, mom and dad. There are always conversations <laughs> where they just <laughs> making soldiers over there. They just, they just help you. They just help you navigate adulthood. It's not. They're not really perfect in doing. There are so many times yeah. where we argue about things, and I'll be like, "It's because you're old. If you're not old, would you know what I'm talking about?" Mm. And they come back and be like, "And you now tell me what it is. Then educate me. Yeah, I want to know. Uh, tell me. You get so my advice to any young girl, child trying to move out of their parents' house, please stay in your father's house. If your father or your mom or your guide or whatever, they are toxic, make sure you have friends, good friends that would help you navigate life because sometimes good friendship mm -hmm. is also a thing. It's also important. Group. It's just hard yeah, to like, find. It's not easy, but I can call my friend and say, yo, I'm broke, you know, just sort me out. And you have that guarantee that my friend would do the same thing. So. Yeah. Just yeah. stay in your house either way. If you're comfortable in your house, be stay in your house. Yes. Don't I mean, but if you're now. not comfortable in your house, but you, yeah, can, you can come and sit hide on that road. Now. Road. No, really, because mental <laughs> no. health is very, Let, very no, important. I understand what Ravina is saying. If you're not my comfortable dear, in your house, is your house, house open to people that you want to You don't want to have... <laughs> That's not going to be... I my call point it clingy parents. My point is, mm. my point is, at some point, you need to... You need to let go. You're not gonna stay no, with your parents No, but at some point you need to move out. To Do you get? You know, you're, you're not going to see. Not you're my, you're not, not going to stay with your parents yeah. forever. At some point, you need to start your own life. Mm. That is, you know, that is different from your parents' life. life yes. And I feel like it's only when you do that that you learn more things about yourself. I'm not mm. saying you can't learn things about yourself from your parents' house, but you learn more. 
because now you are by yourself. You're making your own decisions and you are taking accountability for whatever for decisions whatever you're making. Consequences so you know on. now that this is my life, whatever it is, it is. That doesn't mean you can't call your parents and ask them for advice or cry to them when things get hard. Mm. But there's just a certain level of independence that you get as a woman or a man when you fully leave I think most importantly as a woman. As a woman. Because women go from daddy's home to, to another daddy's home. home. <laughs> like, what is wrong? To For daddy's home. a woman home. especially, because men well, are going to get to the independence of their life in your parents' love. house. I don't see any reason why moving out is a thing. I think if moving out is... Life. Yeah, like, you know, if you have the freedom to do, I like want to say freedom, freedom to but do you anything. have no. I have a friend who still lives. I have a friend who still lives with her parents. If and you have exposed not, parents, mm -hmm. you know she's what she's over. She's thirty. And the that, that's not because yet. they've given her, they've given her the space to be herself. Yeah, so yeah. 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 just like exactly. that. A lot of a lot of Nigerian parents like that. Nothing spoiled. A lot of Nigerian parents live vicariously through their children. The things they can't do, they want their children to be an extension of. Who they, who yeah, they were, who, who they, they, who they, they would, would not be, be. Yeah. exactly, and that that often often of doesn't work yeah. because at the end of the day, the child wants something different, and you want the child to be, you want the, you want to mold the child as to yeah, your own to image or some sort, taste. and the child just wants to find him or herself. I feel like that's <laughs> a major problem in the society. Why the reason why we have more male children outside, lost vision, lost direction. Hmm. If, I think this thing even hits more for the guys than for the women. Because you have a lot of guys out there, 12 year old is already outside hustling. Like, no mom support, I no think, guidance. Yeah, they no... give men the pass to leave. No, I don't know. Not all the men have the permission of the world to live their life. If the women yeah, exactly. have the permission of the world so so I, I would to leave their life. I, I, think, I think I'm not going to generalize it. My brothers do not have permission to leave the house at 12. My brother left the house when he found it, the love of his life uh, and decided uh, to be on his Well, own. I got brothers because, that stay home. Do you but get Because you know, why are you outside, outside by, by 12? Are <laughs> they alone? <laughs> they are still at home. Oh, those that I enjoy, by he's a man. Age. <laughs> the things he's doing now, the age I was, I could not do it. Even now, go, I can't still do it. It's, it's because you, the, you have to for. protect the female child more. It's not like you don't have to protect yeah. the male child. But back then, they rather protect the female, the female than protect the male child. One of the things but I'm I feel like it's changing now. Is because one of the things I'm very grateful for is that my parents did not really stifle us when we were young. Yeah. So they still gave us the room to be ourselves, to be our own, to make our own decisions on our mm -hmm. own. So I'm very grateful for that because I did see children who were extremely sheltered. And, and that is When where... they broke loose, if you know... Um, that is where they were released in. from prison. They do I'm the telling you, open prison door from like seven years ago, they went to prison. We <laughs> <That is laughs> the empathy comes With the kids that were not sheltered at home, like mm -hmm. where because you know, like because yeah. now we could make our own decision for ourselves. Mm -hmm. so, although they will tell us, oh, see, 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 this is how it is. But when you go out there, now you can make your own decision for yourself. Does this work for you? Take it or you leave it. But you and see those people that are not that when they were sheltered. Hey, then I then do bad pass for that. That brings because me they to want my to last try point. everything. That brings me they to my last curious, point. They become curious like children all over again. Just want to try everything. So it's yellow, yellow right? I want to go yellow. It's purple. <laughs> I want to go. No, but like, you see Shege, then you go come back. That, that brings me yourself. to my last point. Having like empathy and having grace for other people that are not necessarily like you, you or have personalities yes. like you because this people you don't know the kind of homes they're coming yeah. from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're and coming as an from. adult, it's something that I've not had to live with like, oh my god, not everybody's gonna act like me because mm -hmm. not everybody was raised like, like me. You. Yeah. People have different upbringings. So when I see some people moving funny, I'm just like, you know, I don't know what they've been going through. That's in their you, life. my guy. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that's that's why you come in as a good friend. Like, because we have different upbringings, that's where friendship comes in with yeah. leadership and direction. You should be able to call your friend and be like, I know you and I have different ways of doing things, but I prefer you do this, put this into this, invest into this. And you see that your friends, before you know, you yeah, guys are living exactly. You guys need to know and understand things. each other's yeah. perspective. Like, you know your differences, but mm -hmm. you can still... That's where friendship on comes something in. Something that that works for you know, everyone. Both yeah. parties at the end of the day. While you are trying to understand your perspective, they are they are not willing to understand yours. Yeah, that, that's another crazy. But <laughs> well, those ones people. are not your friends. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>